listening, if you're watching, and those of you that are here. If you would, turn your Bibles this morning to Genesis chapter 4. I hear things too loud for me. Genesis chapter 4, we're going to talk about uh, the lineage of Cain this morning. The lineage of Cain. Genesis chapter 4, and verse 17, verses 17 through 24. The Bible says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives, the name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was uh, the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal. He was a father of such as dwell in tents and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and the organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubalcane, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubalcane was Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. If you will, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for saving my soul, Lord. I thank you for uh, dying on Calvary's cross, Lord. And uh, we thank you for rising again the third day, Lord, having victory over the grave, Lord. There's no other God, there's no other deity that has done such a thing, Lord. We serve a risen Savior. And, uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, giving us uh, life, Lord, and eternal life and life anew. Thank you for a reason to live. Thank you for a hope. And, uh, Lord, we pray and bless the Bible study and the message to come. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You know, that prayer, I mean it. That's a true prayer. We don't, we don't serve a dead God. We don't serve a God that's in a grave. We don't serve a God that's an idol. We serve, and you've got to remember this, we serve the true and living God. He is alive. He is not here, for he is risen. And uh, people, they celebrate you know, Easter and, and Passover Sunday and Resurrection Sunday. And we know that our Redeemer liveth. And remember that. That should be a, uh, an encouragement to you. Amen? You, you serve the true and living God. I serve the true and living God. But anyways, of all such, uh, we're looking here at Genesis chapter 4, and we're looking at the line of Cain. Cain's line is a short line, and it later gets replaced by another person's lineage. If you will go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. And Seth, and to Seth, to him also, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So uh, this man named Seth is going to replace the line of Cain. And there's going to be a reason for it, because Cain's line doesn't stay... Uh, uh, very long. Uh, Cain is, uh, and the reason why is because of Cain's sin. Cain is a, is a wicked person. He's a wicked man, and so his line is a wicked line. We talk about a line, we're talking about their lineage. We're talking about their seed, uh, the people that are born unto them. And Cain is wicked, and so his lineage is wicked. Cain is a wicked man and a liar and the first murderer. If you would go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, and God's going to judge him so. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Uh, I don't know what it must have been or what it must have felt like, but Cain took a man's life with his bare hands. And that's how man is, murderous and destructive. And uh, we, we create violence and wickedness. And uh, the Bible says that the violence of man is great, and the violence is upon this earth, and we see it today. And back then, they didn't have guns and sniper guns and things like that. They, it was fist to fist, hand to hand, and Cain had to, uh, had to uh, take his brother's, when he took his brother's life, he did it with his own hands, which means he probably saw the life go away from his brother, right there on that rock or on that soil. Man is cruel. Man is wicked. Man's going to be judged for his sin. And you know the story of Cain. He was a wicked murderer. He was the first murderer. For killing his brother, he had to hate him. And for hating him, he, was, he murdered him. 
For hating him, Cain was in darkness. And the Bible says this, if you go to 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 9, He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. And that goes with the brethren. If you hate uh, those that are saved, they're your brothers in the Lord. Those that are saved, they're your sisters in the Lord. If you hate them, you're in darkness. Even with your physical brethren. Verse 10, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Verse 11, But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his, his eyes. See, Cain was blinded. He was blinded by sin, and sin had blinded him so much to the fact that he would kill his own blood, his own blood and his own brother. And you say, well, I've never murdered anybody. Well, you might not have murdered them with your hands, but you can murder people with your lips and with your words. The Bible says, he that hateth his brother is a murderer. And he that hateth his brother, there's no light in him. He's in darkness. If you find yourself hating your brethren without a cause, hating your brother, hating your sister, whether it's spiritual brethren that are saved or whether it's physical brethren, if you find that you're hating them, you're in darkness. You're in darkness. And uh, uh, Cain was in darkness. God told Cain that, his, that sin lied at the door. Genesis chapter 4, uh, verse 6, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. The Lord warned Cain. He says, if you don't do well, sin's going to lie at the door. And the very thing that lied at the door was sin. And Cain took that sin and murdered his brother. He's a good example of what not to be. Cain's a good example of what not to be. He was a wicked man. Because of his murder, Cain was evil, and his works were evil. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers were righteous. See, Cain murdered his, his son, uh, brother because his works were evil. You want to know why people murder other people? Because they're evil. You want to know why people uh, bash other people and people say uh, terrible things about other people and, and dissemble? It's because they're evil and, and because they're wicked. God does allow evil and wicked people on this earth, and sometimes they rule. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 2, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. You want to get people to be miserable? You want to get people to be... Um, Oppress, put a wicked person over them. Proverbs 28, 12, When the righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. You know who that man is? It's Jesus Christ, it's God. And uh, you want people to be in mourning? You want people to be uh, 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 in distraught? Put a wicked man to rule over them. They'll take their sons and put them to war and will... Uh, uh, destroy the women and destroy the children and make them work hard and rigorous and oppressive and starve them. You get rulers like Adolf Hitler and Mao Zedong and, and uh, Mussolini and tyrants. And soon enough in America we're getting rulers like that. Rulers like Nero and rulers like uh, uh, um, uh, the emperors of Rome destroy people and put them to the lion's den for their faith and, and kill people because they believe in something. What is, what is that? That's a wicked man put over them. People get rulers that they deserve. A lot of times we don't like them. But it's because we uh, reject the Lord. We reject His Word. We reject the truth and we become wicked. And we get a wicked ruler. But Cain's line is more to it than what meets the eye. Cain's line is the way of a typical unsa unsaved, lost, unregenerated, Bible-rejecting person, the way of the world. And we're going to look at Cain's line this morning and see what exactly uh, Cain's line is all about. Cain's line is a line of progression and progressiveness. Genesis chapter 4, verse 17. 
<clears throat> and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And, he, and look at the first thing that happens. And he built it a what? He built it a city. Cain's line is all about progress. He built it a city and called the name of the city the name of his son, Enoch. I want you to know some key things about the line of Cain and about his seed. And uh, the thing that we're going to look at is it's going to seem like it's okay. Cain's line is all about progress. All about progress. They started as nomads and they developed complex civilizations. They evolved. They came together. You want to know what this world's all about? We need to come together. We need to come together. We need to come together. We got to just all get along. We have to evolve. We have to change. We have to develop. There were these nomadic people that wandered around and now they started to come together in civilization. They're all about progress. Well, that don't seem too bad. That seems pretty good. That seems pretty cool. They believe that man's survival is due to the development of structure of government and civilization, that man was getting better, man was doing better for himself. The, the development of cities was to share resources, knowledge, and information. What do you have today in this world? We need to come together in cities. And Man wants to build cities. Man wants to form government. Man wants to progress. And uh, if you hinder that progression, you're looked of as an outsider and a no-good person. The line of Cain is a line of progression. The line of uh, uh, positive thinking. The, the line of uh, um, better thinking. Look, if you would, down in Genesis chapter 4, verse 21. This looks like a good line uh, from uh, uh, an untrained eye. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 4, verse 21, And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and the organ. Ah, oh, they developed music and the arts. What has destroyed America more than music and the arts? You have a thing in college today called, uh, you get a degree in liberal arts. And uh, you say, well, what are you against music? I'm not against music. <clears throat> music is of the look and muse of the Lord for the Lord's honor and glory, amen? Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. But I'm telling you that uh, this, is a, this progressive society has now developed music. They're on progress, it seems. It seems like they're, they're changing and becoming uh, more uh, uh, civilized. And you've got to be careful about this line of Cain. It's deceptive. Why, these people, they're just, they're just really super cool people, aren't they? They, they have it all. It's all man-centered. Why, they're developing and they're progressing. It sounds just like, doesn't it sound like modern America today? The development of cities, the development of government, civilization, the development of music. Oh, things are good, things are positive. You've got to think positive. Notice the line of Cain developed music in the arts. The first mention of music, the first mention of uh, musical instruments. You know what? Music can be used for the Lord. It can be used for the devil. Music, uh, uh, music is in the devil's territory. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. <clears throat> that was been in Eden, the garden of God. This is talking about Satan. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardias, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. Satan was well decked with some good jewels. The Lord took good care of him until iniquity is found in him. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Satan was a uh, music director. He was the choir leader and the choir director of the angels. Everybody thinks of angels as sounding good. They say, when somebody sings real well, they, what's the expressions? They sound like an angel. And you know who that angel, uh, you know who the choir director that, of those angels were? It was Satan. If you will go to Job 38, 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And Satan, who was before Satan, was Lucifer. And Lucifer is Latin for bearer of light. He was the choir director. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son 
of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? And Lucifer was a musical expert. He was a musical master. He knew music. God put him ahead of the angels in leading the music. And remember, Satan was on God's side before he turned. Satan ha had all the gifts. He had everything that uh, one would desire, but yet he wanted more. And he was a part of music. And you see that these people in Cain's lineage, they're progressing, as it were. They're, they're the type of people, the positive thinkers, the, the uh, um, uh, inventors. And we're going to talk about that. There are these people that make the world go round, as it were. If you will, go back to Genesis chapter 4, verse 21. 4.22, sorry. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal-Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal-Cain was Nama. Now, Tubal-Cain means uh, to be to uh, would be brought of Cain. So this is the line of Cain. And notice, uh, the notice the progress of man. Notice the positive thinking. Notice the uh, uh, intuition in Cain's line. And you need to understand that because uh, this is the way of the world. This is the way of the world. The progress of man in himself Cain's line doesn't seem evil at all. It seems relatively uh, uh, positive and good, but it's not. It's wicked. Seems like present-day America, promoting progress, promoting uh, 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 going upwards in life. Uh, we're all just coming together, and you got this new world, one world government coming that's forming, that's been formed for years, and all of the, our nation, along with our other nations, are trying to come together, and what's uh, uh, what does Cain's line do? We've got to come together. We've got to come together. You know, we're all going to come together, and you know what that coming together is for. It's for control. A man of sin is going to come one day, and he's going to control the masses. And he's going to do it with flattery and with uh, signs and lying wonders. But today, it's good. It's, uh, people are all promoting coming together. We need to come together, and they don't know how wicked it really is. But it seems so positive and it seems so good. The development of man and civilization, the progress of music, multitudes of instruments, the liberal arts. It says in Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. Notice the inventions. Notice the uh, 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 development of technology. You know what? I like technology. It's nice to have. But technology in and of itself will not save a man from hell. Technology in and of itself will not uh, uh, answer the question and solve the, uh, the problem of death. The Bible says it's a point unto man once to die. You want to know what people can't handle? We're going to die one day. I was driving along the road yesterday, I think it was, and I said, you know what? I was thinking, we're, I'm a dead man. We're all going to die one day unless the Lord comes back. You better know where you're going to go when you die. You better know, you better know the Savior. Technology will not save your soul from hell. Technology will not cure your death. And that's the big thing is they're trying to prolong death, prolonging the inevitable. And I see nothing wrong with it doing it, but the fact is this line of Cain does it. And we're going to, know, we're going to look further as to why they do it. Tubal Cain means would be brought of Cain, would be brought of Cain. Notice these people are, are um, uh, culturally linguistic. Isn't that what's promoted today? You've got to be culturally linguistic. You've got to be in the culture. You have to understand the culture. You've got to speak the language of the culture. And that's what they're trying to do with Christians. Well, you're not along with the, the 21st century. You're not in. You're not with the culture. Notice these people are very cultured. They're very cultured. They know exactly how the culture is, and they, there you are the culture. Notice the possibility thinkers. It leads to the inventions and discoveries. Tubal, Tubal Cain discovered, most likely discovered, the crates and works of iron and brass. These people are dreamers, inventors, creators. They get things done for the greater progress of mankind. It sounds pretty positive. And the problem, the folly of man, is that they put this positive to good. 
is very not good. These people are positive thinkers. You know, positive is not always good. The big thing today, think positive, think positive. If you think positive, you'll be on the right track. That's not true. Think positive, think positive. You want to know something, thinking positive, I think positive, I think, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money. That's positive, isn't it? That sounds pretty positive. Well, thinking positive, I could be thinking positive and thinking wicked, folks. Don't you understand? I could be thinking about making money. I could be thinking about robbing a bank to make money. I could be thinking about swindling people to make money. But it's positive. I'm thinking about making money. The Bible doesn't say to think positive. And people say, oh, you've got to think positive. The Bible says think positive, be positive. And we all got to get along. You know something? There's people in this world you're not going to get along with. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. There are evil, there's evil in this world. I brought a Bible study on that because the, pre, the fact of the matter is there's evil and you're not going to get along with evil. The world wants the evil to get along with good and what they want to do is they want the evil to take over the good. And then they're going to call the good evil and the evil good and then those that don't want to partake in that, they're the evil ones. Which is most every Bible-believing Christian that wants to stick with the Lord, walk with the Lord. Well, we're going to be the outcast, the evil ones. Which, there's going to be a problem with us. If you love God's word, you're going to be looked down upon as a hater and, a, and a, um, a no good. You're not in with a culture. You're not in with a line of Cain. You're not along the positive thought process. The Bible doesn't say to think positive. If you'll go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? True. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on what? These things. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. There's positive things. These things will produce positive thoughts. But you want to know what the world can't re you want to know what the world can't accept is the negativism of truth. I'm going to say that again. You want to know what the world can't receive is the negativism, if that's a word, the negative truth. The measure of a Christian is how much truth they can handle, how much truth they can ex accept and receive. You want to know something, that, why a lot of Christians aren't bearing much fruit, why a lot of Christians aren't shining forth in this world? Because they can't take a lot of truth. Jesus Christ was, did not get crucified on Friday. You want to know what? A lot of Christians believe that, and they get offended if you don't. We had this holiday called Good Friday. The Lord wasn't crucified on Good Friday, folks. And I don't know why it's so good he got crucified. But you know something? People believe it. Why do people believe it? Because they want to believe it. The measure of a Christian is how much tr negative truth they can receive for positive results. How much truth can you receive? That's a measure of your Christianity. How much truth can you receive over the pulpit? How much truth of God's word? You want to know God's word is pure truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And most people, they can't handle the truth. It's so potent. And we live in a society today so filled with lies that the truth is almost uh, un unpalatable. It's unbearable. They don't want it. They don't want it. I don't like that. The Bible didn't say to think positive, it said to think good. You know what? You can think positive thoughts, and those positive thoughts aren't necessarily good thoughts, folks. But anytime you think good thoughts, they can be positive. They can be positive. You want to know something, though? Whatsoever things are just. You want to know it's just? The law of the Lord is just. God is just. Whatsoever things are pure. You know what? What's pure in God's eyes is an abomination in this world. Righteousness. That could be negative, folks. Whatsoever things are lovely. The Lord is lovely. His word is lovely. Well, the world doesn't think that. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue. You know, in order to think those thoughts, you're going to have to uh, accept and embrace the negative truths of the word of God. If you can't accept those negative truths, then your thoughts aren't going to be on good. 
You need to realize that the line of Cain are positive thinkers. They're positive and progressive uh, thinkers and ideologists. They're the backbone of the liberal America we have today. And the problem is, is people are seeking positive rather than God. You say, why do people want that? You know, people go to a church Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, and they don't hear from God. They hear what they want to hear because their ears get tickled, and they hear some positive stuff and a little uh, uh, stories, and then they go home less edified than they came in. Uh, uh, they didn't learn much of God's Word. They didn't learn much of God's truths. But they think God was all around it, and God was nowhere to be found many times in most Christian churches today. Say, why? Because people aren't looking for God. They're looking for uh, uh, their own imaginations. God is not in all their thoughts. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4, you live in a society today where God is not in all their thoughts. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. You know why people can't handle the truth of God's word? Because they're wicked. And they substitute God's truth for false lies of positivism. Amen. It's not being preached on much, and it needs to be. It needs to be taught. It needs to be preached on. You want to know something is God's Word, I, and this is a true testimony. I was working one time, and a guy found my Bible, and he started reading. He said, I, I, I don't want to offend you. I should read my Bible. I started reading your Bible. I said, no, that's what it's there for, to be read. Amen. I'm glad. And he said, you want to know what he said about this book? He said, boy, this book is very negative. The reason why this book is negative is because it's dealing with man's sin. And man is negative in his sin. And you go to a church where you don't hear anything negative, you're not hearing God's word. Amen. What people can't handle is the negative truth of God's word. It's all got to be positive. No, it doesn't. Positive is not necessarily good. They're called wicked people. The wicked is, uh, uh, God is, they won't seek after God. God is not in all their thoughts. They seek after vain imaginations. Cain's sin was very negative. You want to know something about Cain's sin is most people agree that that was pretty negative. Bashing his brother's brains out or killing him, that's negative, that's terrible. That's, I bet you Cain's own offspring would have said that too. Oh, you know, Cain, his murder was so negative and so bad. But then they would have said, oh, we've progressed, we've evolved. We, we wouldn't kill anybody like Cain would. We would we'd have dialogue. <laughs> but you want to know something? Cain's sin is so negative, but people don't want to hear it preached against. It needs to be preached against. Cry aloud. Spare not, lift up thy voice, preach the word. But people want preached what they want preached, not what God wants preached. They don't want the offense of the cross. You start telling somebody about Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus is your personal Savior? Uh, and then, you, you know, you've got to mention hell. Hell's a place where people are going. And you start mentioning hell. I don't think this is a wise time to talk about it. Really, then when, when is a wise time to talk about it? i like to know. Because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. There's not a better time to get saved than now. <laughs> There's not a better time to get right with God than now. There's not a better time to get over your sin than now. But if you listen to man, there would almost be no appropriate time to preach the gospel. There would be no appropriate time to talk about hell. There would be no appropriate time to uh, talk about sin. Americans today in, in modern America, they're so along the line of Cain with positive progressivism that we can't even talk about sin anymore. Well, sin is, you know, I heard this thing that, well, sin isn't, right and wrong has changed over time. That is so far from the truth as far as the East is from the West. You want to know why? Because they're along the line of Cain. We're progressing, we've evolved, we've uh, arrived. We're uh, better now in the 21st century. We know more things. And because you know more things, you think that you have more wisdom, and God says you lack wisdom. God says you're miserable, poor, blind, and naked because thou art rich and increased with goods. 
And these very people of progressive thought and, and, and education, that's what's worshipped, education, knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. Accumulation of facts. That they become themselves hypocrites of what they say. Oh, we wouldn't kill. We wouldn't murder. We'd talk about it. We'd have dialogue. We'd discuss it. And right there, they're going to lie to you. Because these same group of people are going to kill you. Go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And these things that are being preached are being hushed today in America because they don't want the negative truth. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Well, certainly they weren't beheaded by uh, the world. <laughs> they were beheaded for the witness of... And why were they beheaded? For the witness of Jesus and for the word of God which did not worship the beast or his image, neither received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. You want to know who beheaded them? You want to know who beheaded the Christians, the people that stood for God? The same people that said, oh, we're, love. we're all love, we're all positive and progressive thought. We've evolved, we've changed. You need to be like us. We don't need that God, and we don't need to have conflicts. We can all get along and come together. I'm telling you, those type of people are hypocrites. And they will kill you the first chance they get. They, they might not kill you right now with uh, swords and staves and knives and guns, but they, they'll kill you with words. And what they'll do is they'll hinder your freedom to proclaim the gospel, to preach the word. They have freedom for themselves, but not for you. Eventually, when they get the chance and they get political power, they'll kill you. They'll think to do God's service, killing you. That's the type of people you're talking That's the line of Cain. They won't kill you right away. Cain didn't kill his brother right away. He killed his brother because God wasn't his thoughts because Cain did it his way and offered a sacrifice that he offered to God. Not what God wanted, not what God was pleased with. And he killed him. his brother. He was jealous and envious of his brother. And that's just how these birds are. That's how these people are. And you, get, you can't be uh, naive of it, Christian. We are to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And we can't fight back because we want to. And uh, You know, these type of people will try to put you in a pigeonhole. You can't believe what you believe but we can do what we want. And we can believe what we want. The main problem is God is not in all their thoughts. In these line of Cain, notice how progressive they are. Notice how e evolved they say they are. And I keep using that word. And I hate that word. But that's what they use. We're, we've evolved. We've become better. We've, we're, uh, we've arrived. We're educated. We're civilized. Remember, these people are city people. Psalm chapter 10, verse 4, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, 28, we say, what's the problem with Cain's line? They're trying to do what they're trying to do without God. We're, they're trying to do what they're trying to do with making these inventions and trying to make civilization better because they want to do this and they're going to do it without God. Romans chapter 1, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to, the, to do those things which are not convenient. Uh, don't think of it as a... Uh, how do I say it? When these line of Cain do things that are very uh, unusual, don't think it strange. God gives them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, they start thinking one way, and then as they progress in this line, they start divert. Their, line, their thinking gets warped even more. Why? Because God gives their mind over to, repro to be reprobate. And they start doing things that you never thought they would do. They start off as what you'd think of as good and positive, and you wonder why all these good and positive things turn sour. It's because God 
has given these people over to a reprobate mind because they don't look after God, they don't seek after God, and God is not in all their thoughts. See, the problem with Cain is humanism. We are going to make ourselves better by ourselves. We don't need God or His Word. We can do it through community. We can do it through education. We can do it through ourselves. That's the line of Cain. Doesn't it sound kind of familiar? Doesn't it sound kind of like our culture? We're going to do it our way. We're going to, we're going to try to obtain that uh, uh, millennial type of mentality, the millennium of God where it's peace and prosperity, but we're going to do it without God. We're going to do it man's way. That's called humanism. And that's taken over our culture. And it's very deceptive because it seems like it's goodly and godly and it's as wicked as the pit of hell itself. If you will, go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 18. And unto Enoch was born, born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And this Lamech character is an offspring of Cain. And look what Lamech does. Lamech, Genesis 4, 23, And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. You say, what's the big deal? He murdered somebody. Well, his great-great-granddaddy murdered somebody too, didn't he? Like father, like the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Evil breeds evil. Son just like his father, father just like his son. If you would go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. You want to know what Cain did? The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. You want to know what people do all over America and in the world? They mock at God. They mock at God. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that also, uh, that shall he also reap. Cain rejected God, and God rejected his seed. You want to be careful. If you're a mother and a father, what you teach your children, what, how you live in front of your children, because you reject God in your life, they will reject God in their life. And Cain had nothing; to, he wanted nothing to do with God, and God was not in his thoughts. God was; uh, he didn't look after God, he didn't seek after God, and so his lineage was destroyed. And his sons, his grandsons, committed the same crimes and the same sins that he committed. The sins. You know, and the Bible is very clear that we're going to give account of our own sins. We're going to give account of ourselves. I understand that. But you need to realize that your sins can affect other people. And most importantly, they're going to affect your children. Your sins can influence generations of your family. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Numbers chapter 32, 23. But if you will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You know, that verse scares me. You know what that verse is saying? If you sin, it's going to come back on you. Whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap. Exodus 34, verse 7, Keeping mercy for thousands. The Lord's merciful. Amen. He's forgiving. Forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity, here it is, of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy. It always starts off that way. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. You know something, mother and father, is your sins, although you'll give account to them personally, can carry on through your family. If your sin and your rejection of God can carry right through unto your seed. 
And the only reason why the Birkinshaw line, and, uh, from me at least, would not serve God and, and go on to uh, serve the Lord is because me, George Birkinshaw, isn't serving the Lord. You know, there's an old saying that what you do, your kids will do it more in excess. What you do, your kids will take to excess. And your sins, they'll take to excess. And you serving the Lord, they'll do it, and they'll do it heartily. But you better be careful. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9. The Lord's very clear through the Scriptures about these sins that pass down through generations. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. What do you have in America today? You have generations of kids that are cursed because of the sins of the mother and the father. And I'm not saying that they can't get saved. I'm not saying they can't go to heaven, that they can't change. But I am saying that it's hard to break away. It's hard to break away. You say, why? Why is that? Because they rejected the Lord. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Now, that's knowledge of the Lord. That's not just general knowledge. I also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also forget. And what will he forget? He'll forget your children. He'll let your children and your children's children and your children's children's children die and go to hell, have no knowledge of God. And you're living in America today, and the people know that this nation's going to hell, and you're living generations that know not God because of the sins of the mothers and the father. And I'm not saying that uh, uh, this... Don't get me wrong. We're all going to give account of our own personal sins, but the sins can pass down. Sins can pass down through generations. And what the sin is, is the main sin of rejecting God. Cain rejected God. He offered his sacrifice that God had no... He could have obtained mercy after offering the wrong sacrifice, folks. But why did he offer the wrong sacrifice? Because he didn't know God. And people failed to realize that. And so then he didn't know how to r repent. He didn't know how to get right. Oh, I offered the wrong sacrifice. He didn't have res respect unto it. I'm sorry, Lord, would you forgive me? He didn't do that because he didn't want to. He didn't care to. He didn't know God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And that wrath is not them getting mad. That's the wrath of God. You want to know something is the wrath of God is upon children today because of the mothers and the fathers that have rejected and hated God. God will save them. He'll save their souls. But you see the, the moral decrepitness of America. That's the result of people that forget and forsake God. You say, well, how do you know that provoking to wrath is, is the wrath of God? Well, the Bible says, if you believe the Lord, He abideth ever. But if you believe not, the wrath of God, what? Abideth on them. Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the what? Children of disobedience. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. People that aren't saved, the wrath of God is on them. People who have hated and rejected God, the wrath of God is on them. Yes, God is loving, God is merciful, God is kind. And this is the admonition. Train up a child. Say, what do we do to prevent this? What do we do to prevent a uh, curse upon our family, upon our lineage? How do we know that the Birkinshaw line will still keep serving the Lord? How do we know that uh, the other families will keep serving the Lord generations from now if the Lord tarries? Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. You train them right. You say, yeah, but what about the exceptions? What about the ones I try to train right and I try to do and they go off into the world? And Well, there's exceptions to every rule, folks. You do the best you can with the Lord's guidance and the Word of God and 
let the Lord, you know, work out the rest. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you do it God's way, you will be blessed. And I bet you you're going to have more kids that serve the Lord than them that don't. And if not, so be it. The will of the Lord be done. But do what's right. Train up your children in the way that they should go. Cain didn't do that because the line of Cain doesn't care about the ways of God. They care about humanism, human progress without God. What, up, what ended up happening to Cain's seed? What ended up happening to his seed? This seed of progressive thought and, and intelligence. and uh, You got that in America today. Oh, this higher education. You got to go and get a higher education. They worship this education. There's a good quote that says, Education without salvation brings eternal damnation. A lot of truth to that. Just because you're educated doesn't mean you're intelligent. It doesn't mean you're smart. <laughs> there are a lot of highly educated people that aren't the brightest tools in the shed. They're just full of themselves. Genesis chapter 7, verse 21, And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man on whose nostrils was the breath of life. Of all that was in the dry land died, and every living substance was destroyed which is upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and creeping things, and the fowl of heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark, and the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. I say, what happened to Cain's line? What happened to uh, uh, all those progressive thoughts? What happened to all those people that were highly educated? God wiped them out. Amen. God wiped them out. You know, the Bible says that which high, is highly esteemed amongst men is what? An abomination in the sight of God. That which highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination in the eyes of God. You want to know what people highly esteem? education, personality, charisma, progressive thought. And God says, that's, that's pungent to me. And you know what God did with the line of Cain, the people that invented all these nice inventions? You know what? We look up to people like that. Thomas Edison and, and, and um, uh, all these other inventors. We look up to that because of the creative thought and the work that went into it. And God says, you know what God says to that all? Bunk. Amen. You know what God did with those progressive evolutionary thought process people? He wiped them out. He drowned them out. They were wicked. The Bible says the wicked, the imagination of their heart was only evil continually. You know, in the big picture, God wins. The good prevails and the wicked perish. Remember that, Christian. You go through and you see, you know, at times the wicked prevail. God is on his throne. I've read, there's a good quote. I've read the end of the book, and Satan loses. Cain and his line of progressive thought and education were eliminated. But his way is still in this world. So we'll go to Jude chapter 1, verse 11. Now, the book of Jude is that older New Testament. New Testament. Well, wasn't Cain in the Old Testament? Wasn't he way far back? Wasn't his line way back in the Old Testament? Yeah, it was. Weren't they drowned out? Yeah, they were. But look at this. Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of uh, who? Gone the way of Cain ran greedily after the error of Balaam and for reward have perished in the gainsay of Kor. You know what God's saying? God's saying, although I wiped them out, although I, uh, Cain is dead and, and his line is gone, I replaced them with Seth, his way is still in this world. And he's saying that you have to be woe unto them. You want to know what this world is? It's on the course of the way of Cain. You want to know what you don't want to buy into is the way of Cain. It's a way, folks. It's a way. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's, a, it's a, a way that you think. It's a way that you believe. You don't want to go down that road. 
the way of Cain, woe unto them. New Testament. This is New Testament, folks. The way of Cain is still alive today. What God is telling you is you're not to go down that road. You're not to go the way of Cain. And what's the way of Cain? The way of the way of the world. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And what's the way of the world? We're getting better. Man's getting better. We're all coming together. Uh, uh, no discrimination. All love, 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 love without the truth, without the Word of God, without Jesus Christ. We want to come together and we want to praise ourselves for what we have done with our civilization. And that's the way of Cain. And that's the way of man. And it's not the way of God. You read that Bible, all through it, it's man doing it his way and God saying, it's not my way. Come out my way, my way. You know, the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto man. I read in Proverbs this morning uh, about Lord pondereth the way of man. A way is the way you think, folks. You can know Scripture, you can quote Scripture left and right, and you can still live the way of the world. You have to understand the ways of God and the way of God. And it's opposite this world. It's opposite the mindset. The mindset of this world is on the way of Cain. Man's the center of everything. Man's progressive. Man's doing it with his own way and technology. And God says, the Bible says, and everything give th uh, thanks. It says, do all things as unto the Lord and not unto men. Well, that's the opposite of the way of Cain. The way of Cain is do everything for yourself. Uh, love yourself. Love your family and love everything about man. And you're supposed to love your family, but it's God first. And that's the very thing that people reject. The way of Cain. Woe unto them. The Bible puts that in there for a reason. God says you need to be careful, Christian, of the way of Cain. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all you've given to us, Lord. I pray that we'd be wise about the way of Cain, Lord. It's not just a lineage, but it was a way they lived. And Lord, I pray if there's anybody here that's not saved, that they would come to know you as their personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.